where I was actually a professional musician. This was before we were born, so this was a long time ago. And um, I played jazz. Had a jazz group. But we went and heard a lot of blues guys, because I was in Chicago. And, and I'm sure you guys are gonna you're gonna go on Amazon now and look for every recording that this man made. Duke Tomato. Duke Tomato. He was a blues guy in Chicago. We talked about him last week. We talked about how you'd go to see him at one of the dive bars that he would play in. He would do this song, and he'd start riffing. And he'd just start riffing. And then he'd start talking to the crowd. And he would say to the crowd, do you have everything that you want? And of course, we'd all answer, no. Of course not. And then he'd ask us, do you have everything that you need? And we'd say, no. And then he'd say, do you have everything that you deserve? And we'd say, no. And then he'd say, well, I know the answer. I know what you need and want and desire. Shall I tell you? And we'd all go, yes! He said, you need two things. You need more love, and you need more money. Of course, we all said no. We have everything we need, everything we want. No, the answer is always no. Who has everything they want? Who has everything that they need? Well, the guy in our reading this morning does. The parable. He has everything. He has had a bumper crop. He's had bumper crop after bumper crop. He has got so much stuff that his barns won't hold. If he was at that Duke Tomato concert and Duke Tomato had said, do you have everything you want? He'd go, yep. Do you have everything you need? Absolutely. Do you have everything you deserve? Absolutely. What happens when you are confronted by the question, do you have everything you want? Do you have everything you need? Do you have everything that you deserve? And the answer is yes. Then what? What do you do when you have everything? Yes. You know who has everything, I'll bet, these days? Bryce Harper. <laughs> Man signed a 13-year contract for $330 million. That's more than I could imagine. I don't think in hundreds of millions of dollars. Do you? Not cashed it in yet? No, no. So I broke that down. That works out approximately, don't get me down to the pennies and all that, to about $25 million a year. Anybody wrap their mind around that one? Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. We're all, we all got that, right? Yeah, I can't do that either. So I thought, how much does that man make every day? So I got my calculator out and I did the math. You know what it works out to approximately? $68,500 a day. Now, since this is a public document, I can tell you this, that's what y'all pay me for a year. <laughs> now, on the one hand, you get 12 months of me for the price of one day of Bryce Harper. <laughs> on the other hand, I don't have everything I want, need, or deserve. As I'm driving a 2011 Honda CRV, not a 2019 Ferrari. What do you do when you have everything? Where do you turn for guidance? Where do you turn for wisdom and inspiration and knowledge? Spider-Man. That's right, I said it. Spider-Man. Not the movie guy, the comic book guy. First episode, first issue of Spider-Man. The very first issue that came out in 1961, 62? Hmm? Where he was told by his Uncle Ben with great power comes great responsibility. 
Well, let's just substitute one word. With great wealth comes great responsibility. In the parable, the man has done nothing wrong. He's not a crook. He's not a thief. He's not dishonest. He has not swindled anybody. He has not stolen from anybody. He has acquired everything that he has legitimately and honestly through hard work and dedication and the sweat of his brow. There is nothing wrong with what he has done. There is nothing wrong with the accumulation of what he has accumulated in and of itself because he worked hard for it and he got it through the sweat of his brow and his own labor. It is the reward of hard work, a lifetime of putting in the hours. And God says to him, you fool. Doesn't condemn him. Doesn't say you sin or you awful human being. He says, you fool. And the reason he says that is pretty simple. Because his solution, his desire, his plan, everything that he has is to store it up in a barn and hoard it all. To keep it all for himself. It's all mine. It's all mine. You have great wealth and great responsibility. And when Jesus talks, when Jesus talks about being rich towards God, he's not talking about being poor. He's not talking about, you know, not having anything. He's talking about taking what God has blessed you with and giving it to the world. Using it not simply for your own benefit, but for the sake of others. It's a basic principle. You learn it all in kindergarten. Share your toys. Share with your neighbor. Share with those around you. Share with those who don't have as much as you do. Share wealth. You have more than enough. It ain't going to hurt you. Share. Don't worry. It's a pretty simple concept when you think about it. It was so simple, in fact, that the ELCA some 20 years ago or more now came up with a slogan. And if you can sloganize it, then it's good, right? Well, blessed to be a blessing. And it still works after all these years. You understand that it, for every last one of us sitting here, God has blessed us. God has blessed us in more ways than we could ever imagine. You have been blessed with an abundance of good things. Some of them are maybe financial. Some of them are maybe a talent, a gift, an ability. Some of you are blessed with time and energy. But we've all been blessed in many, many, many ways. And God gives us those blessings so that we can take them and become a blessing to others. And that can work in countless ways. That blessing could be Preston's pantry. And you can donate to that. That blessing could be you have the voice of an angel and you can sing and entertain and lift people up. That can be that you have an ability to build things and you have an ability to fix things and repair things. We have 20 people who just got back a week ago from going on a mission trip where they took their talents for building and fixing and repairing and went to people who didn't have that ability and changed their lives gave them a gift, a blessing. Maybe what you have is time. You're sitting there at home going, what should I do with today? And maybe the answer is volunteer. Maybe the answer is reach out and talk to somebody. Or make a phone call. Or make a visit. Maybe your talent is you can play golf. And you can play in a golf outing where the proceeds from that go to a charity and fund cancer research and fund ministry. And you have a heck of a good time. 
and other people are blessed by your ability to take a club and hit a little white ball. Do you understand where I'm going with this? We all can do something. God has given us the ability to do something. We're simply called upon to do it. Don't hoard it. Don't hide it under a bushel. Don't keep it to yourself. Share it with the world that needs it. Because whatever it is you can do, the world needs it. The world needs joy. And the world needs love. And the world needs hope. You all know about yesterday, right? So 20 people got killed in El Paso, Texas by a jerk. I can't use the word I want to call it because we're in church. Then, since that wasn't enough for one day, nine people got gunned down in Dayton, Ohio last night. 29 people in El Paso were critically injured. Most of them were children. You understand the world is going to hell in a handbasket? And we can do something about it. But well, we won't do anything about it if we keep what good that we have in us and the good we have in our hearts and the good we have in our souls and the good we have in our beings to ourselves. It's not enough to sit in here and be angry. We have to change the way we live. We have to change the way our society works. We have to find a way to stop the stupidity and the hate and the madness that causes people to think that they are helping America by shooting up a Walmart. God has given us the means to do that. And it takes all of us doing what we know how to do and doing the gifts that we have and the skills that we have for positive good to bring messages of hope and joy and happiness and peace and love and if we don't, well, you'll be darn lucky if the worst thing God called you was a fool. Use what God has given you to change the world. Don't build barns. Build bridges. And build hope. And build love. And build change.